all my students the techniques in this video before we work on jives or any other more difficult transitions because they make everything easier to learn. Even though these techniques work really well, many, if not most, proficient wing coilers don't use them. The early adopters into this young sport were already experts at other wind and water sports. They brought habits and assumptions with them from those sports. Because they are excellent athletes, they found ways to do many amazing things, despite the more difficult fundamental techniques that they adopted. Then they made lots of nice YouTube videos for us to follow. But, unfortunately, most people don't have the natural talent and years of experience that these early adopters have. So it's all the more important for us to use the easiest, most efficient techniques that we can find. Stand with your back foot over the foil mast, pointing across the board. Your front foot is placed a little wider than shoulder width apart, pointing towards the front of the board. That's right, I ride with my front foot parallel to the center line of the board. There should be equal pressure on each of your feet. The arch of the back foot should be somewhat downwind of the center line and the front foot should be somewhat upwind. This stance gives your front ankle and knee the best sense of the forward and back angle of the board, which is critical for flight control. The back ankle and knee are in charge of banking side to side to turn. Thus your feet make an L shape. Your feet need not be at a perfect 90 degree angle to each other to gain this advantage. If that feels too uncomfortable, you can bring your toes together a bit so your front foot isn't exactly parallel and or the back isn't exactly perpendicular. Just try to keep them as close to an L shape as you can. This will feel weird at first, but that's okay. Stand upright. You do not want to be bending forward at the waist, a common beginner mistake. The most common recommendation I have given to date is keep your front arm straight. This is the most important aspect of the most efficient and effective posture to take on your board. Adjusting your back arm bend controls the power and the front arm controls the height of your wing off the water. The front arm is pivoted up and down from the shoulder. The back arm is bent to increase and decrease the distance between your hand and your shoulder. If you ever find that your back arm is straight because your front arm is while you're winging along, rotate your upper body towards the front of the board until you can bend your back arm. Hold your bum or handles with your palms facing down. I used to ride with my front palm facing up until I realized that it would not allow me to do a Heineken jibe. Even the race jibe is awkward unless your front palm is down on the boom. So I switched my grip for everything. Watch where you're going. This is as much for balance as navigation. Use your peripheral vision to keep your flight control until you can feel it without looking at the front of your board. This is a lot to keep in mind, I know any of this is new to you, you will have bad habits to break. I promise you, using good, efficient posture will save you energy and make it easier to launch, learn your jibes, tacks, and all the other techniques. Why this posture saves energy, makes learning everything easier, and helps you go faster. Why should I keep my front arm straight? Keeping the front arm straight enables efficient use of your muscles. You only use one major muscle group per arm to control your wing, the front shoulder muscles and the back biceps. Of course, your forearms are used to grip, but your front biceps get a rest. Because your front arm is straight, your back arm won't need to bend as much. The more bent your arms are, the more effort it takes to hold them. If you use your front arm to depower, you are going to have to fight against the pull until it does. The same can be done by straightening the back arm and, if needed, swinging the wing up 
away from the water with the front shoulder. This takes less physical force from both arms. Keeping your wing further from your body gives you more leverage to control how it flies. If you need to prove this for yourself, try the extreme. Try winging with the handles or boom touching your chest for a while. Not only will you get tired quickly, gusty winds will provide a dramatic demonstration of the advantage I'm describing. Wings work best when the wind can flow over them undisturbed by obstructions, like your body, for instance, which creates a lot of turbulence. Keeping the wing as far from you as possible will increase lift and reduce drag, so you can launch in lower wind, stay foiling in lulls, and go faster when you want to. Why shouldn't I use my regular surfing foot stance? People with lots of experience on other boards may not believe that my L foot stance will work. After all, surfers have been using a stance with their feet across the board successfully forever. But a foil isn't a surfboard or a sailboard. Let's look at the difference. When a rider shifts their weight around on a planing board, the footprint of the board grows and shrinks and shifts around, and so does the center of lift. To control this moving target of upward force, your foot stance needs to be wider side to side on the front of the board. My L foil stance only controls a narrower, more triangular area of potential force locations. So the traditional stance is indeed better for a surfboard or windsurfer. In this graphic, the surfer is riding straight down the wave. The center of lift is about at the blue dot. The center of lift must be between the red lines drawn between the toes and heels, or you are losing control and will probably fall. Here the surfer is carving a turn and the center of lift of the board has moved forward and towards the rail. Thanks to the traditional foot stance, it's still within the red lines. In contrast, the center of lift of the foil does not move much. It's always somewhere near the center of the surface area of the front foil. Since it does not move around, the narrower, more triangular shape of the lift control area of the L-shaped foot stance works fine. This means you can gain the benefits cited in the main part of this video and retain full control of your foil. Here we see an example of a wider L foil foot stance. If keeping your feet close to the center of the board feels too much like walking a tightrope, move each of your feet away from the center of the board in equal measure. This keeps the control area of the stance over the center of lift while giving you more side to side leverage. I will cover the advantages and disadvantages of the width of your stance and other finer points about this posture in a future video.